Hey, so guess what I got? That's right, everything that you need to know about buying a motherboard for your new bleeding edge Ryzen 5000 series CPU. We will cover the differences, benefits and trade-offs between X570 and B550, as well as the compatibilities with the slightly older 500 and 300 series motherboards. But before we do, just shh, come over here a second. Like, I, I didn't want to say this in front of the others, but you're my favorite viewer. And as my favorite viewer, I really need to ask you a huge favor. Could you like this video and subscribe? Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Also, I will leave affiliate links to the motherboards I recommend down in the description below. Let's start with compatibility. All current 500 series motherboards are going to require a BIOS update to support the new 5000 series CPUs. So if you are going to buy them together now, make sure you're familiar with how to do that. Most 400 series motherboards will be receiving their BIOS update from January 2021 onwards. Though some will not support the new CPUs, but we won't know which are chosen and which are not until later next year. And unfortunately for 300 series motherboards, they won't be supported at all. The next question I want to answer is what is the difference between the B and the X chipset motherboards? The easy answer is extra features and price, but let's go into more detail on that. B550 motherboards are the more budget-friendly variant with less expansion, limited support for PCIe Gen 4 components, less overclocking headroom, and you're less likely to have Wi-Fi built in, just to mention few of the main features missing. As far as plug and play performance goes, however, it performs more or less the same, so if you're not a mad overclocker and don't need or want a ton of expansion, B550 might be for you. But before you run out and make a purchase, let's look at what the X chipset boards have to offer. Firstly, you'll have more PCIe Gen 4 lanes, so you can support, say, a Gen 4 GPU and a couple of Gen 4 M.2 drives for blazing fast transfer speeds. In most cases, you will have built-in Wi-Fi and also much higher clocking overheads. But typically, X570 motherboards start where B550 stop in regards to price, so you're almost always guaranteed to be paying more. But if features like Wi-Fi and faster storage are more appealing to you, then it could be worth the money. Lastly, why pay 600 quid for a motherboard when you could pay 250? Well, the highest end X570 boards, you're paying for the highest ceiling for overclocking, maximum expansion, and aesthetics. Things like ARGB, passive cooling, thermal armor, which also plays into overclocking. And also things like dual LAN ports. So at the end of the day, what do I recommend? If you need a solid platform and just want it to work with no special requirements, then get a B550. Stock performance is great, expansion is just fine, and you can still get all the RGB and Wi-Fi you want if you're just willing to pay a little more. But if you want to overclock, stack your system with M.2 drives and empty your wallet, then go X570, where the sky really is the limit. But honestly, you don't really need to unless there's something that that board has specifically that you really need. I hope this helps. If you've made it this far, you have my thanks and why not leave a sub on your way out? Also check out one of my other videos here like this one where I go over which RAM is the best and why. And until next time, peace.